it's only been three weeks since I did an emergency repot and now already you can see that this maple is starting to grow again. This tree is in dire need of some help and therefore I'll show you how to do an emergency repot, what tools to use and in fact this is a pot with a hole in the bottom of the pot, just one and there's no wiring holes so at the same time I'll show you how you can solve that issue, still wire the tree in the pot and then I'll do a little bit of a follow-up in the second part of the video I'll show you what the tree looks like after three or four weeks. Last Monday we had a club meeting and one of my colleagues at the club asked me what do I do with this maple? Um, the tips had started to die off, we actually removed quite a bit of the canopy but there are some leaves on the inside and when I asked her she informed me well this tree actually already had problems last year. So now the question is how do we get this tree to recover? One of the very easy ways to recognize it and you can see that with this tree is the soil has become very compact. In fact when I asked her whether the tree was tied into the pot so I could have a look at the roots and I picked the tree up the pot stayed on the table. That is a sign of a tree that is not well rooted. The roots um, are compact, the soil has retracted, it has dried out and therefore when you water it the water will flow on the sides of the pot rather than through the core of the root ball. That's a situation that you can rectify and one of the ways to rectify it you take, take a chopstick and you start pushing it through the soil so there's holes in the soil and water enters the soil. However what I saw when I lifted the roots out of the pot gave me the idea that maybe there's something more going on. As you see here some dead roots, another root that's not healthy anymore. There's a lot of calcium buildup. So all over the soil is very compact. Um, you can tell that there's a crack between the pot and the soil. This soil needs replacing. If we want to get this back healthy then the best course of action in this case is a repot. The other solution towards an emergency root pot when the roots are the problem could be to take it out of the pot and put it in a bigger pot and fill that up with good substrate. There the risk again is that water runs from the root ball into the substrate surrounding it and therefore I am not a big fan of it. However if you are not confident with normally repotting you can still do it but you really have to pay attention that you water the tree well every single time that you water it so that also the core of the root ball gets watered. Doing an emergency repot is a risk. If you don't really know what you're doing, there is a big risk that the tree dies. So you have to be quite gentle, you have to have a feel for the tree and you need to know when to stop taking substrate out of the pot. Taking the tree from the pot, let's see whether there's anything living below the roots. There's a little pillbox in the root ball. And you can see that the roots have not actually covered the whole pot. Um, I feel that somebody repotted it by just taking it out of the pot and adding a little bit of substrate. And now if you look at the roots itself, there's hardly any growth going on. So really high time to get rid of some of the visitors, loosen up the root ball, cut back some of the roots but not that much because it is an emergency repot, and then see how we can get this back into a pot and back to health over the next couple of weeks. I have collected a few tools for the repotting. A pincet, because sometimes you just want to remove small plants. A root hook, a wire clipper, so I can clip the wire to fix the tree back into the pot. Chopstick, unprecedented tool for bonsai, ideal for removing soil from difficult angles. General pliers to wire the tree back in. And my very old root scissors, which I always use for repotting. I'm going to leave the mesh in place because it's in place well. I'm just going to rinse out the pot. Gently open up the root ball. And I'm not going to go all the way into the core. I'm just going to remove the outer edge and I'm going to recommend the owner to do a proper repot in spring. Interestingly enough, the substrate seems to be quite well. So maybe the main reason for this damage was that the tree was not properly wired in and was loose in the pot and therefore the water didn't go through all the root ball. Then for drainage purposes I'm going to poke holes 
through the root ball. Trying to disturb only the specific spots where I'm going through the root ball and not the rest. Here it looks really unhappy, so I'm going to scratch out a little bit more. As you can tell, I'm really not removing all that much from the root ball. This is really to keep it alive through this summer. And in springtime, it needs a proper full repot with a pro proper root trimming. Here, this confirms my earlier suspicion. If you look carefully with me, in the root ball is hidden the mesh of another repotting. So the last repotting has not been done properly. It has just been taken out of the pot. They didn't even remove the old mesh. Now the roots can reconnect with the bottom of the pot. Um, it is very dry, so I'm going to wet the tree and avoid the roots drying out completely. Do try and disentangle the roots a little bit. Here you can see that a lot of the roots have just grown along the edge of the container and are actually quite long. Um, I'm going to disentangle all of them and just remove the longest parts after which I'll replant the tree in open substrate. Now have plenty of spots where the water can percolate through the root ball into the substrate below it. And as you can tell, there's a lot of fine feeder roots left, so I have no concerns with this plant recovering quite quickly. So the pot this came in is a affordable Chinese pot. And you can tell it only has one hole in the bottom and there's no other holes to attach a wire to. So how do you then prevent the tree from being loose in the pot and attaching a wire to it? Let me show you how I go about this. Um, first of all, you need a thickish piece of wire. Clip a piece of the thickest piece of water, wire that will fit at the bottom. So you have a thickest piece of wire and in fact you just wire the smaller wire to connect the tree to around it and I would like to use two so I'm going to add two to there and these you feed through the hole through the hole in the pot and of course you grab them here on the other side this way you now have four wires to put the tree in the pot. So when you wire the plant into the pot, it is important to make sure the wires are not on top of the nabari, but on side roots and or lower roots. And when you're turning the wire in place, you twist only once you've created some slack. And you create slack by first pulling, creating tension, and then you turn. Here you can see, we've taken the wire going underneath the big root, coming out on the other side, and we're going to connect it to this one. Make sure that both wires have equal tension, otherwise you get what I have here, and you just pull the wire askew. Now they have equal tension. Tension, twist the slack out of it. And with that it's pretty much set in the pot. Clip off the leftover wire.
push the ends down so that if you ever have to work in the pot you don't have a wire in your fingers. And backfill the substrate. And use a chopstick to gently work the substrate between the roots. It really is a side to side movement which creates a little bit of space between the roots and that way the roots will all be surrounded by substrate. The branch that has started dying back is now starting to rebut here on the top. However, considering there's a big dark spot there that is dead, I'm going to remove it a little bit further down. Now you see the cut side is nice and healthy. Nice and healthy. Trimming back the old stumps will help prevent diseases next year, um, as fungal diseases can quite easily develop on the dead sections. By removing it, I'm allowing the plant to close over during the rest of the year, and next year I should have no more problems with this tree, and the owner can happily put us back in our garden next week, because the tree is back on an upward, upward spiral. In a recap, what we've done. We've removed this little tree, taking it from the pot, and remember there was a little mesh still buried in the roots. I took that out. Now it has been repotted. I showed you, I showed you how to plant a tree when there's only one hole in the bottom of the pot, like so. I'm now taking the final steps in removing the dead sections because after repotting, the tree has recovered. It is now growing back again into a nice healthy bonsai. And next week I will return it to the owner. So happy with this result. Um, if you have a sick tree, if you have any questions about a sick tree, if you're wondering, maybe I should do an emergency repot myself, why don't you post a comment down below? I'd be quite happy to help you think. And you know what? The watchers of this channel are quite knowledgeable. Maybe they can even help you. So that's it for now. I'm finishing up here, then I'll return the tree to the owner. And with that, the emergency repot of this Japanese maple is done. Over the last three, three and a half weeks, I've worked on this tiny little Japanese maple. The owner brought it with her to a club meeting about three and a half weeks ago. And she asked me what to do with the dieback that she was facing on top and the tree was completely loose in the pot. So she requested I take it home with me, work on it and return it to her when it's back in full health. Now with new buds starting to open, the whole tree is full with little red points. The tree is ready, ready to go back to the owner.